This scene is brought to you by Sabakwa Supplies and Services Limited. Aqua Adventure Malta. Good evening and welcome to the scene, the only show in Malta to bring you the best of Malta. What's on, where to go, what to do and where to be seen. Oh yes, that's right. Every week we're going to be bringing you the best venues, the most exciting events and having a look at what's coming up in the next seven days. From festas to festivals, gigs to galleries and from clubs to concerts. We'll be taking a look at some of the most exclusive locations in Malta, whether you're an islander or just visiting. And we'll also be having a look at some of the activities you can get up to in Malta, from the obvious to the more obscure. And finally, we'll be giving you an insider's guide to everything Maltese and how to make the most of the Maltese islands. So if you are looking to get the best out of your summer, this is the place to be seen. Malta Camino and Gozo have one unique treasure and that is easy and convenient access to the sea. No matter where you are on the islands, you really aren't more than half an hour to 20 minutes away from the coastline. Absolutely, and I'm dressed for the day today in my beach wear. <laughs> this makes Mal the Maltese Islands the perfect location for water sports most days of the year. We've already taken a look at sailing and swimming, but today we're going to venture out and take a look at what's beneath the surface. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going diving. The Maltese Islands really are the ideal diving destination. With dive sites all over the coastline, the weather really can't stop you from taking part here. If the wind's blowing in one direction, you just go to the other side of the island. <laughs> and Malta has it all. From historic wrecks to caves, swim throughs, cabins, arches, a blue hole, marine life, warm waters, and dive sites suitable for divers of every ability from beginner to technical diving. And if that's not enough, visibility is often around 40 meters. Malta has some of the, some of the cleanest waters in Europe. So we've been talking a little bit about diving. Um, if I want to start diving, if I want to see what it's like, what do I do? Where, how do I get going? Okay, you know, visit any dive centre and sign up for the Discover Scuba Diving Programme. So this is what the DSD is. That's I the keep DSD, him yes. bantered around the office. Yes. This is the Discover Scuba Diving course. Yes. How long does it take? What does it involve? Do I have to sit an exam? Okay, normally just takes half a day. Okay. Yeah. No exams. There is a little bit you know, in the classroom, so we have to give you a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of information before we can do anything. Right. Then you know, we take you into shallow water, either in the swimming pool or just very shallow water in the sea, and we'll run through, you know, just practicing, you know, putting your face in the water, getting used to everything very slowly, very easily. And when you're happy and you're comfortable, then we take you for a dive. So is this a qualification or is it a learning experience? No, this, you know, it's not a qualification, it is just an experience. It is exactly what it says, you discover scuba diving. Right. So if I, if I think I'm interested, a discovered scuba diving um, experience would allow me to investigate whether or not I'm a bit nervous exactly. or whether I'm going to enjoy it and whether or not I want to go on and do it at a course. Yes, because it gives you all aspects you know, of, the di uh, of diving and you can see, yes, oh, this is something that I'm really enjoying and I want to know more. Brilliant. And you say it takes half a day? Half a day, that's it. Do we have half a day? We have half a day. Let's so go and do yes, it. Smashing, great. Excellent. Okay, Hayley, so today we're going to do our Discover Scuba Diving Programme. We're going to start with just a small briefing just to give you the basic information so that you know everything about you know, what we're going to be doing in the swimming pool and then when we get out to the sea. All right, first I need to give you some information. Obviously you have to be aware that when we get into the water that it has pressure. 
and that pressure is going to affect us. And as you can see, that the deeper we go, the more pressure we're going to be under. However, you don't need to worry because that pressure has very little effect on most of our body, only on the air spaces. But on those air spaces, we do need to be careful. So we need to equalize our air spaces so that we make sure that the air is the same on both of them and that way it doesn't give us any pain or discomfort. So we'll do that a little bit later and I'll explain that to you yeah, in full. Then we're going to go through you know, with the equipment that we're going to use. So this is, you, know, you can see here, this is the equipment. I'll go through that again with you just before we get into the pool. Once we've done the swimming, you know, once we've done the equipment, we'll go through some basic signals. Underwater, we can't talk, but we can still communicate because we can use different hand signals. Now the first one and the most important one is this signal. That's the OK signal but it's a question and an answer. I ask you, are you okay? You respond to me, yes, I'm okay. All right, then we'll go through the other ones as we go on. Then we'll go through using the different pieces of equipment, you know, getting comfortable with everything, everything that we're then ready, and we're ready to go. So, should we get into some equipment and go? Smashing, off we go. talk to us about kit and equipment, what it is and what we do with it. Very nice to see you, thank you very much. Same here. Um, what am I holding here, Alex? That's a regulator. Okay, and what's this for? That's used to breathe. Okay. Underwater, obviously. For sure, so I'm assuming this end is the breathing end. Exactly. And this goes? On the tank. Okay. This is what we call the first stage. Okay. This is the second stage, and they are connected with a hose. So I put this into my mouth. Can exactly, I go ahead and do yes. that? Exactly, mm yes. -hmm. It's quite comfortable, actually. Yes, it is. Um, so it's got some little valves on this side here, and, and I've noticed it has a button a here. Button. What's this That for? is what we call the purge button. Okay. And that is normally that? used to release the air to be able to take it off, take off the first stage ah, from the tank. Okay. And it's also used as well as a safety device if, if you need air underwater and you have water maybe in the second stage and don't have enough air in your lungs to clear it out automatically, you can use the you purge can use button. That to purge it. And that's the main features of a regulator. Breathe, yes. purge, and this bit which is attached to the tank. To the tank, yeah. Now here's a question. I see that we've got one, two, three, four black regulators and we've got one that's yellow. Yellow, okay. <laughs> what is... Which stands I... out. Yes, it does, it certainly does. Um, 
And what is it? Why is there a yellow one? Is this for people that colour coordinate with the rest of their suit? Okay, let's start with the colour. Okay. The uh, the uh, purpose of using yellow is for emergency purposes and for safety. Yellow is highly visible underwater, okay. so this is what we call the alternate air source. Right. Like kind of the spare regulator. Right. So apart from having your... You'd have two. First stage and primary second stage. Wow. You have your alternate second stage. Okay. Which is there for any emergency that might might occur and during the dive. And is this just for me or...? This can either be for you, just in case you have uh, problems with your primary second stage, or for your body, if he has, if he has trouble problems. breathing gotcha. from his own regulator. Okay, and it's yellow and so it's, it's so bright. It's yellow so that it's highly visible underwater and your body and yourself could easily find it. Excellent. Um, so another question I've got for you here, Alex, is yeah. you've got, apart from our lovely yellow one here, we've actually got four different regulators. Why do we have four? What's the difference? Why do we have four different regulators? I particularly like mainly, this one. Yeah, mainly they vary in, in little details. Okay. Small details. For example, the one we're looking at has got um, the ports from where the hoses uh, are attached. Okay. Are, are pre-configured in a way to make it easier for you to find your instruments and and uh, the second stages. And for example, this has got a very easy to press purge button, which is covers the whole face. So any any point you you press, you can purge the regulator. So it's really the different regulators are for me for the different kind of needs that I have and maybe different kinds of diving. Is that right? Yes. Yes. So how do I choose which one is right for me? You normally have to see what what depth you're looking at to dive, because normally you, for greater depth you need a high performance regulator. Not in, in essence, they are all high performance regulators, but some, because of the materials they are using, sure. for example, in the second stage, are more more so adequate. So I match for the kind safety. of regulator that I need to the kind of diving that I do. Is exactly, that right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, if I'm not an expert, can I come and ask you and of you course. tell me which one to get? Sure. Brilliant, Any thank day. you. Excellent, Alex. Uh, thank you welcome. very much. Alex, hello again. So good Hi. to be speaking to you again. You're the guy who's t telling us all about kit, what it is and what to choose and what to do with it. And today, we're doing my favourite bit, which is dive computers. And I've got these massive boys. You mentioned, seem to have done a bit better than me because I've got this huge one here. First up, what is a dive computer? Why do we need dive computers? Okay, a dive computer basically gives you all the information you need during your dive. As in depth, no decompression limit. Okay. Your maximum depth, your dive time. Okay. All on. Now, you ad I, actually, you learn all of these things through charts and how to plan dives when you do your dive learning and your qualifications. Yes. But after you've qualified, actually, this kind of takes away some of the hard work for you, doesn't this it? This basically replaces the use of the dive tables. Fantastic. And Makes it calculates it much easier. everything by itself. Brilliant. Now, we've actually got three that we're going to look at here. One of them is mine anyway. <laughs> um, but And we've got this great whopping thing here, which we'll talk about in a minute. But for somebody who's a recreational diver, what is the, where do they start with a dive computer? Because they're not the cheapest thing in the world, but what are you wearing there? The one I'm wearing on my left hand is, is, the, is a very basic uh, computer, which still gives you many functions. Okay. Which is ideal even for the recreational diver. Okay. And so if you just support. started, this is the yeah. one for you. And, it's, yeah. and, and how deep would you be able to go with that? And you can go, it's not a question of depth. Okay. It, it, it mainly depends on the type of dive you'll be doing. If you're doing a, a switching, switching the mix of to another tank. Oh, right. right. During the dive, it would not be possible with this kind of dive computer. But this is your basic yes. get you going diving kind yeah. of model. So what's the one you've got on this side? This one I have here is a watch type okay. dive computer. You have basically everything. So you can wear it as a watch as well? Yeah. Brilliant. All the information in a watch. 
Excellent. Which can be used uh, also for everyday use. Uh huh. And a little bit more um, complex than this one, I presume. A little bit more detail. It's not a question of uh, complexity. It's just that you have more information. More with this. information. This okay. allows for gas switching during the dive. Mm. It's also got an integrated uh, digital compass. Wow. As well. <laughs> that sounds great. It can also give you the uh, air pressure in your tank via, via transmitter, which is attached to the tank. And, and it's quite a nice it. looking watch as yeah. well. So, okay, let me ask you this. This big boy that I've got on my arm here, which is actually quite heavy, which there's no way that I'd be wearing that as a watch. What is this? Well, that's a different breed, really, of, of dive computer, because it's a trimix. A trimix a Trimix dive. means what? Trimix is when you're diving with uh, helium, a mix of helium, oxygen, and And, and why would nitrogen. you do that? Why would you dive with different gases? For, uh, trimix diving allows for deeper depth. So this is for someone who wants to do the more advanced, more technical. Exactly. And what's this going to tell me? That will calculate everything by itself for you. So you don't basically. have to worry about no. everything. This is just going to take care of it for you yeah. and uh, obviously it's take got, up most of your own. Unlike other dive computers, it's got a, an LCD color, okay. color screen. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Does it take selfies as well? Uh, it might. <laughs> In the future. <laughs> Fantastic. So these are the three different kind. I'm presuming that there's a lot more uh, dive yes. computers in yes, as well. Yes. So again, how do I decide what's right for me? Is it just a case of deciding what kind of diving I want to do? Again, it, it depends where you intend going. If, if, you, if you intend going to trimix diving or uh, nitrox diving, you, you should choose the right computer. So first of all, you decide what kind of diving you're going to do, and then you get the right computer exactly. that matches you. And I'm, so I'm presuming that the computer saves a lot of time and is, is a much way, safer way of diving yes, as well. exactly. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I'm going to uh, actually take this off in a second because my arm's really hurting. But thank you very, very much indeed, you're Alex. Welcome. And if I need to know uh, what kind of computer I want, I can come and talk to you. Is that right? Any day. Brilliant. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks, okay. Alex. the where to go for our diving special and this is the blue hole in Dwera in Gozo that there's hundreds of well documented shore dive sites in Malta and Gozo but this is the biggie this is the third top shore dive in the world and it has it all it's got the blue hole beneath us under there it's a cave we've got the arch we've got amazing marine life we've got a swim through passage we've got coral gardens and usually about 30 meters visibility it's an absolute must for divers for all ability as well here in Malta in Gozo so let's get kitted up and get underway <music> If you're like me and you can't dive, and it's not because I'm scared, <laughs> for one reason or another, uh, then I'm gonna be taking a go at snorkeling, which is another way of enjoying the underwater world. In these dive specials, we'll be taking a look at all aspects of the diving culture. From learning to dive to what to do and where to go once you're qualified, these dive specials are gonna give you all the information you need to enjoy the underwater world. Ian, so let's get going. I'm, yep, I'm keen to start the snorkeling. You've got some kit here. Do you yep. want to talk me through it? Explain to me what's going on. Now, I understand these are called fins. These are called fins, <laughs> not flippers. Not flippers. Not flippers. Right, these okay. are, you flippers know, these are, are dolphin, fins. isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. Doesn't matter which foot you put them on. Oh, right. Yeah, there's yeah. no left or right. And be dexterous. Exactly. Very easy. You so know, you just slip them on. Just slip them on, and that's it. 
Now, oh, okay. you can put both on, but then never walk you know, with your fins on, because otherwise you end up with a very sore nose because you've got hit the floor. <laughs> because you've got, okay, so the best thing is to wait until you're in the water. Exactly, and put, then put them on there. So I'll leave one on now for now then. That's great. So this is basically going to obviously help me swim with little effort, Exactly, it gives I you assume. stability in the water and helps you move a little bit quicker. Great stuff. And what's the movement I need to adopt here? Literally keep your legs nice and straight yep. and just move your legs up and down. I can do that. <laughs> And what else, have you, what else have you got? All right, so the other things that I've got for you here is just your mask and your snorkel. Right. Snorkel would always you know, be on the left-hand side because that's the way that it's shaped. Okay. You know, ready, you know, so it's easier to go in the mouth. And then literally put it on, strap you know, goes behind the back of the head, and you just make sure that it's nice and comfortable. So this, obviously, I've seen people snorkeling. This stays above the water so exactly. to allow me a breathing, breathing yes. area. But are you, can you still go underwater? As soon as you go underwater, just hold your breath you know, as you go underwater. And as you come back up, breathe out. Most of the water will be blown out the bottom, ah. but any else will just be blown out the top. Right. And then you're ready to go again so you Because it may fill up with water, so just kind of as you come out. As you come up. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to put this on now. So you can make sure that I've got it on correctly. All right, so got the mask. Yep, we are good to go. Excellent. Well, Malta is still buzzing with events at the moment, and this week is no exception. Let's have a look at what's on. Absolutely. Now, it's huge. It's huge. Joseph Kalea is playing tonight for his 2015 concert at the Luke Shaw Grounds in Pembroke. Not only is Joseph singing, but he's joined by 90s pop legend Anastasia. Amazing. Uh, the Malta Philharmonic Orchestra will also be there, and Malta's own Red Electric. It's an event not to be missed. Now, it's probably too late to get tickets, but you never know. Worth having a go. And if you're taking a drive, through Ili Brash, you might just hear the guys underway. Wow! Uh, Wednesday night is This Is How We Roll at the Lido in Slima. Expect the same unique How We Roll vibe from last winter at Stardust, but it's bigger, better and louder at the Lido. Indeed. And starting on Wednesday and running until the 7th is the, now get this right, Asha Music Festival 2015 in Gozo. Three nights of great music. This is how the lineup looks. We've got on the 5th of August, The Riffs and The Nakara Project. On the 6th of August, Versatile Brass Band. 7th of August, The World's Best Dire Straits Tribute Show. <laughs> You've got to get down there and try at least one of those out. But listen, that's all we've got time for you for you in this show. But if you want to find out any more about this show, anything about diving, anything about anything we do at The Scene, go onto our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash The Scene in Malta. Indeed, and if you want to watch this show again or any of the previous in the series, find us on YouTube, search under Brave Media Malta. Make the most of your week, and until next week, ciao.
This scene is brought to you by Sabakwa Supplies and Services Limited. Aqua Adventure Malta.